This is a female because I had this snake out a few days ago showing it to a group of students and so I was able to see what sex it is. Snakes, um, like most animals, are males and females. They're not hermaphroditic. They can't, they need the opposite sex to, sex to reproduce. You can tell the difference in sex on snakes. There's a number of different ways because different species have maybe some different characteristics to look at. But with most snakes, uh, the female's tail, which starts in this case down here by the cloaca, which is where the body ends and the tail begins. Um, females' tails are shorter and thinner, and they start to taper immediately behind the anal plate, um, or the, where the tail begins. Whereas a male snake of the same species, of the same length, would have a longer tail, and it would be broader, and it would not begin to taper until maybe an inch or more, about 8 to 12 scale lengths, and then it would start to taper. And that's because snakes, uh, male snakes, have what's called hemipenes. They actually have two reproductive organs. They have two penises instead of one. And they're located uh, at the base of the tail. And so they're, and they're inverted. In other words, it's like um, when they're at rest, when the snake's not reproducing, it's like uh, taking off your sock inside out. So they're sort of tucked inside out in the base of the tail. And when the snake does mate, they, they invert. Uh, they only use one at a time. And it sticks out and during during uh, reproduction. So in order for uh, so you can tell a male snake because the reason why it doesn't start to taper until a little bit long until you know an inch or two is because those those hemipenes are located in the base of the tail and there has to be room for them. Um, now I wouldn't recommend grabbing a fur lance and grabbing its tail to see what sex it is unless you know what you're doing. Another interesting thing about uh, a fur lance is like most well like all pit vipers. They have a pit between their nostril and their eyes on both sides of their head, which are heat sensing pits, which they use a, they have a very interesting, uh, highly adaptive organ. This heat sensing pit is basically almost like a, a radar, you could say. It allows them to sh uh, basically send a beam out out of both, both pits, and they can detect the, sminus, the, uh, the, the smallest or tiniest uh, degree or change in temperature. So, as a as a snake that is um, mostly after warm-blooded prey, a snake uses its its heat sensing pits to detect prey at them. If a rodent or something walks by or moves by, it can sense that heat, that you know hotter. If maybe it's 80 degrees outside, the rodent, let's say, is 90 or 95 or whatever, and it can sense that heat. So it's a way of of sensing both prey and also predators. Um, some other interesting features about snakes, including this one, is uh, they don't have ears. They, they basically cannot hear like we do. Instead, they sense um, sound, I guess you could say, through vibration. So they have a very, very... Uh, they do have an inner ear apparatus, but it's not like our, ours. So they can sense the tiniest vibrations in the ground if something's walking by it. Uh, it can sense it, and so that's sort of how they hear. It's not, it's not quite the way we do it. They do have nostrils, and so they do smell with their nostrils, um, but to a much lesser degree than many other animals smell, because they have another way of sensing their surroundings, which is with, with their tongue. You can see, you know, snakes are always flicking their tongues out, and what they're doing is they're collecting microparticles in their environment. Uh, when their tongue is out, and when they bring their tongue back into their mouth, it rests up to a little organ called a Jacobson's organ, located in their head, and then that tells the brain what it is they've touched, uh, a rock or a leaf or whatever it is, a stick. So, um, so really snakes taste their surroundings and sort of smell, you know, smell and taste is very similar with their tongues more than they do their, their nose. Another interesting thing about snakes is, is that they don't have eyelids. They don't close their eyes. Um, they have instead a clear uh, scale that's uh, you know, completely clear that covers their eyeball, which protects it. Um, you know, a lot of snakes are moving around on the ground and stuff, and a lot of debris. In any case, so they, they never close their eyes. Um, they don't. They don't. They don't have eyelids. But that doesn't mean they don't sleep because they do. Um, you can, if you get to know snakes well, you can tell a, a sleeping snake from one that's awake. But, um, but it is interesting that they, they never close their, their eyes. 
Um, most people know that snakes shed their skin. Fact is, all reptiles shed their skin. It's just that snakes usually do it in one piece, which is pretty unusual. But even turtles, crocodiles, lizards will shed their skin. They just do it in little tiny pieces. So you don't usually see it as, as obviously as, as snakes do. Locomotion. <coughs> snakes, snakes move in generally three different ways or a combination of those ways. One is called serpentine motion, and that's what this snake does. You can see it's in an S shape now. And what it does to move is it presses off its bended coil from one to the next and sort of pushes itself from side to side through, in this case, the grass. So when this snake starts to move next, it's going to push off here, here, and here, and here at the same time, or almost simultaneously, sort of pushing its way from side to side through the ground. Um, another way snakes move is, is through ungulation, where they, where they, um, they have scales on their belly called um, ventral scales. Basically what they do is they, almost like a caterpillar, um, they sort of go like this, pressing their scales against the ground one after another, sort of in, simo, in, sort of in rotation, so they can crawl straight if they want to, um, sort of undulating their way along. So that's another way snakes move, because of course they don't have legs, so that freaks out a lot of people. An obvious difference between snakes and most other vertebrates. Um, the third way that they move is called side winding. And um, see, this guy's just started to ungulate. He's moving pretty much straight right now, so he's ungulating. And I'll try to keep him away from you. But now he started to now he's now he's serpentining there because he's going from side to side. Oh, and he tried to bite me. Um, the third way is side winding, where a snake will literally. You notice he's trying to get away from me, right? I mean, this is not an aggressive snake. He's not chasing me down. He wants to escape, which is typical of these, this species. <clears throat> so the side winding is where a snake will basically pick up the front half of its body, pick it up off the ground, stretch it out, set it down on the ground, then pick up the rear end of its body, and try to throw it in front of the front end. So it's sort of stepping over itself. It's called sidewinding. There's a snake in the United States called a sidewinder that does a perfect example of this. But those are the three primary ways snakes move. And they can do combinations of them, like this snake has already shown you. <coughs> 